So, I'm 11 years this past February sober from drug addiction. Sorry about my constant tea drinking, but something's going on. It's very annoying. <laughs> and you cough too. I know. It must be eight hours of sleep in three days. Well, I know you got a lot more because you just sat in the back and rested while the rest of us drove, but... Let's say that I don't have the gift of driving. <laughs> We all have our gifts here, you know what I mean? I stick to what I'm good at. <laughs> well, yeah, go forget it. Forget it. <laughs> you know, I've been married for um, eight, eight years now, and my wife is helping me have a filter, filter what I say. It's usually something that probably most wives are probably encouraging their husbands and say, oh, just wait before you say something like that. So, um, I'm praising God because that was, that just happened. <laughs> now, I don't know if any of you know our story, but I've uh, been sober, I grew up in church, knew all about Jesus, I got saved every time there was an altar call. I mean, I must have been saved at least 150 times, at least. But I never had the power of God in my life. I never had the power of God to live like I thought I should. And so I got into my early 20s and I started using drugs and my life became dark and desperate. And if you know about addiction, you know what I'm saying when I'm talking about darkness. A place where there is no light. And uh, my brother brought me home a card from this missionary from the Dominican Republic that came to our church. I obviously missed that Sunday. And he brought this card home and he said, listen, I know your life is screwed up and all that, but here's a card of these missionaries that felt like God was supposed to give, I was supposed to give you this. Maybe you should do something with it. And I was thinking to myself, I failed French in high school. What am I going to do in a Spanish-speaking country? So I put it on a bulletin board in my room, and it was like every week, the car kept growing until it's all I could see when I walked into my room. I called up this guy, Mitch Martinez from La Vega, Dominican Republic, right in the middle of the country. Has anyone ever heard of the Dominican Republic? Okay, a couple people. You're not alone, Thank homie. you. I see that hand. In the back. Thank you. So. And uh, I called him up and said, can I come hang out with you? And he said, well, sure, what, what group? I said, there ain't no group, but just me. And he said, do you speak Spanish? And I told him that I felt French. And I didn't think the call was going very well. And the icing on the cake was when he said, well, I'll just call your pastor. I said, oh, no, no, you don't have to do that. But thankfully, John's dad over here, he's my pastor, Pastor Bert. And he said, um, Pastor Bert said, well, the kid's a little sketchy, but he comes from a great home, and we really, we know God's doing something in his life. And is anyone else here thankful that God doesn't wait for us to get it all together to start moving and working in our lives? We don't have to fix it all. So uh, I called him his missionary, and the story is really crazy, I mean, about all the different things that happened, but uh, basically, February 4th, uh, I flew out of Boston, Massachusetts real early in the morning and I got, I got high the night before. If you're an addict, you, need, you try to hold on to the very last minute. And, uh, and so I, I got onto the plane and it was the, felt like it was the, a new beginning for me and I, I said, God, I, I don't know how to change. I really don't. I tried a lot of different things, but... <clears throat> While I'm in the Dominican Republic, I will read your word and I will pray. And I ask you to show up. And that's all I did. And the Bible says this in James 4, it says, draw near to God and God will draw near to you. Wherever you're at, whatever it looks like. What are you doing? 
just keep keep going, bud. You're doing really good. Romans 12 says this. It says, "Don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind." I began to open up God's Word one hour a day in a foreign country. It had nothing to do with church because their services were way hotter than this and a lot longer and in a language I didn't understand so I said Lord I'm not going to go to church while I'm in the Dominican Republic I can't stand it <laughs> so I read my Bible and I prayed every day and it's incredible how the living God comes in and changes who we are to who he's called us to be little by little and we don't have to bring all of it before him and give it up all at once it's just a process and as we draw near to God he draws near to us and changes who we are and this is the incredible gospel message that Jesus came and gave his life that anyone who believe will not perish but have everlasting life then he goes on to say and life here to the fullest so this next song is for all the broken people out there and if you're married this is definitely when your wife nudges you and says, mm-hmm. <laughs> Drop it, Johnny, let's do this. <laughs> See, I've heard it said, yeah, that music heals the soul. But I have sung a thousand songs and they never made me whole until I joined the holy chorus there. It started long ago And though we carried me a while Still so many miles to go So, so So help this broken man When the road is long And write in me a melody So I can sing redemption songs And cause when push comes to shove It'll never be enough to make it on my own No, help this broken man's soul Help this broken man's soul Now I've sung these words So many times before, y'all But I never felt anything, no See, I wanted something more so bad Then it came like rushing waters to these old Trying dusty bones your life giving words they pick me up and take me home home yeah yeah so help this broken man when the road is alone you know it's long y'all write me a melody so i can sing redemption songs because when push comes to shove it'll never be enough to make it on my Oh. 